Well, Lance, I, I don't like to see you in a padded room. I certainly don't like to see you having lost your job this year, but, I mean, you got to look at the glimmer of light, which is this past Monday's Raw was not on your resume. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, 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 I didn't get through the show, to be perfectly honest. Um, I mentioned it before. Um, I guess it was when we were looking at the Abaddon uh, uh, Sheeta match. That I said, I don't want any more zombies. I'm tired of the supernatural, unrealistic, you know, you have to send, suspend your disbelief to another dimension stuff. And the Randy Orton promo with the mask being all burnt, I thought was pushing my level of suspension of disbelief. But when it got to her sitting on the playground and stuff, I'm like can't take this and it's it's again it's not just wwe it's you know impact did the dark realm and the murder mystery and and aew is doing the abaddon thing and wwe has done all kinds of fiend related things and again maybe it's working for some people that they're having to branch into a new direction for the pandemic and different but it's it's just not something that I like in wrestling and I can't get around. And I, I think the thing for me that, that really did it for the Alexa segment was at some level, I still on some level want this to be a wrestling show or even shit, even just a TV show based in reality. And I just can't help but think that if I, I was the the owner, the director, the guy in charge of the Monday night television show. And this woman shot a fireball at a dude's face and burned him up. I wouldn't go to commercial break and send the people out to set up her playground set. Like I I it's it's just it's too much for me. And it takes me out of the show completely and, and I struggle with it. And again, if it's pulling grid ratings and more power to them, but yeah, well, I, it's not. I wonder if I, I wonder what I would do um, that as a producer, when I was there, like you generally get the, you know, the show ahead of time and you're to give feedback, you know, critique it and so forth. If there's something they miss speak up. And if you, you know, give feedback so they can take all of that and make the show better. And there was times where, because again, I have a very uh, rigid uh, view of you know what I think works and what 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 is good wrestling. So there was often segments that you know wouldn't fit with my mentality, and there was times where I would rather than critique it because I didn't want to just be too negative. It's like I'd be like, well, what about this instead, and rewrite the entire segment. It's like, hey, it's just as an alternative. And I wonder what I would do with these. Whether Rewrite it and send in a blank sheet of paper. Like, I kid you not. And again, I don't want to get into big details. I'm not supposed to, but just a little one. There was a Goldberg segment pre-WrestleMania where, you know, I forget. He was supposed to, you know, turn and look at the WrestleMania sign while confronting Roman or something. And I didn't think... Bill Goldberg, and I, I know I, I know Goldberg as a person, and again, I was there with him in WCW and for his initial run in WWE, and I'm like, to me, that's not what Goldberg would do. It's like, I wrote an entire page essay on why Bill Goldberg should not take his eyes off his opponent and look at a WrestleMania sign. And, and that's the kind of, I'd like to say, passion I have for strong beliefs in what I think is right. And, and things like when I watch the show, I wonder... And it's not that there isn't stuff on the show that I do like, but those things ha have moments for me. And, and I think it's, it's, it's very common, and maybe it is just a trying to cover all bases right now. But, you know, I've heard other people talking about how I used to talk about it with Impact way back when, you know, I was, you know, really unsatisfied with the Impact, where it was like, is is the person writing the show of two completely separate minds and that, you know, they would have, there was, they did a joint show with like New Japan at the Tokyo Dome they aired one time. It was like the greatest wrestling show I'd seen in like three years at that point in time. It was like, this is incredible. And then the very next show was just the most russo comedy stuff. And I'm like, 
how is the same person producing this? And then I see the fantastic presentation of Roman Reigns with Paul Heyman and just, you know, the way they're doing the, you know, the head of the table, which I think is really, really great. And then I see the burning someone to a crisp and having Alexa Bliss act like she's 11 and mystically changing her clothing. And I'm just like, bro, listen, this magic stuff is is bullshit enough. OK, I hate it. Fireballs and all this other shit. But you know what? On top of that, you do, in fact, have a grown woman who is dressed as a schoolgirl on a playground. You know what I'm saying? Yes, it's, it's, it's uncomfortable. And not only that, it's not even that she's wearing that outfit and on the playground, but then they put adult makeup on her. Okay? This whole thing is just the wrong kind of wrong. And then you throw magic on top of it, and it's like, there is nothing good about this. And I see people try to defend it, and I'm like, are you living in fantasy land? Like, do you have to convince yourself in your brain that this is not spooky? Like, dude, you go to a playground, and you see an adult woman dressed like a little girl playing on the toys? I mean... You call the cops or social services. You call the fucking police or something. What kind of mind games is this person playing? Well, I know exactly what kind of mind games they're playing. And I got people pretending like, oh, it's that's you're just thinking too much about it, Brian. I'm like, really, bro? I mean, seriously. And then on top of that, she's throwing fucking fireballs and changing outfits in the middle of a segment in the middle of the night. It's just everything about it sucks. Everything about it sucks. If you're a big fan of these video clips here on YouTube, you're missing out on full-length shows. Down there on the bottom right-hand side of the screen, click that Join button, and when you sign up, you'll have full access to all of the shows that we've got up on YouTube, over 300 at current count. Wrestling Observer Live, The Brian and Vinny Show, and Figure Four Daily with Filthy Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. Hit the Join button, sign up today. You can also click Subscribe, and you'll always be alerted as to when new shows and clips are available.